What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Mastery Podcast. Now, I promised you all that uh, I'd be having more guests on here, um, and uh, I'm not disappointing you all today. I've got somebody that some of you all know, some of you won't know, much like when I do things, some of you know me and some of you don't. Um, but uh, I'm delighted to bring on to the podcast today, Kuba Challenge. Nailed it. Nailed it. Right. Well, that, that was my first bit done. And it's not like me to get my nerves, but you don't want to get a big dude's name wrong. Um, but Kuba, um, firstly, um, from my perspective to you, I, I kind of, I want to bring people on the podcast who not only build a business, but build a body and uh, have massive integrity with the coaching that they do and have a lot of lessons for the coaches out there, because there's a lot of people that don't, um, haven't developed the skill of coaching, but maybe they've developed the skill of training. So we're going to get into that a little bit. But Kuba is a, um, for those of you who don't know, I mean, Kuba is an, an IPB pro bodybuilder. Um, and uh, he's the owner of Ultraflex uh, Gym in Rotherham, which is a lot of people will say that you have one of the best gyms in the country, <laughs> without a doubt. I'm yet to go. I'm yet to go. Um, but uh, I will. But also, Kuba runs an incredibly successful. Um, online coaching business and I just just for a second Kuba for those that people that don't know firstly thanks for joining me because it's an absolute pleasure to have you here but could you just give everybody just a, a kind of an overview of, of kind of who Cooper is as an introduction <laughs> so first of all thank you very much for having me on it's uh, it's definitely a massive honor I've followed you for a long long time um, for many many years probably a lot longer than you actually realize um, so you know for me this is definitely you know like a, a big fanboy moment a bit of a sort of uh, like a dream come true in many ways from a, from a professional standpoint, to be totally honest. So definitely really appreciate this, Mark. Really does me a lot. Uh, who am I? Well, who am I? <laughs> What's the best way to describe this? Um, <laughs> where do you want to start from? Well, I'll tell you what. Just, you're a bodybuilder. Yeah. Incredibly passionate about bodybuilding. When did bodybuilding start for you? And also... Like right now to this date, you are a dad to dogs, and I've just heard them. <laughs> you're, a, you're a partner to Meg, who's an IPB pro as well, um, but you're an owner of a gym um, and a coach, right? So these are all rolled up into this big, into this kind of empire that, that, that you've got. And I think that, uh, you know, what is that like to you? Like, that's your, that's your day, that's your life. Um, what would you describe yourself as now? More of a, a coach, a bodybuilder, an entrepreneur? I, I think the best way to describe this is since a very young age, I knew that all I want to do is bodybuild. Yep. Like when I was at school, I, I wasn't interested in anything else. Like teachers literally gave up on me because they knew like if it wasn't anything to do with training or what I'm eating or what I'm doing, I wasn't interested. And that was it. So yep. that was end of conversation. And they just, gave up trying because they knew no matter what they did, no matter what discipline is, you know, I would get, I wouldn't be interested. So for me, bodybuilding has molded me into who I am. And I've molded my life to be able to bodybuild and live through my dreams and love what I do on a daily basis. So everything I've ever done since the age of 15 has always been to be able to bodybuild as a priority. And then everything else would be kind of a second, a second thought process. Yeah. So I've molded my life to be able to devote myself towards bodybuilding and everything it entails. So from a young age, I said, I want to be a bodybuilder. I want to own a gym. And these were the goals that I worked towards literally from the age of 15. So I started working in a gym. I worked in a call center for I've been 17 up until 18. When I was 18, I started PT. I actually did the first comp prep for someone when I was 17 because I actually first competed when I was 16. Um, so, you know, the journey started at 16, started very young. And for me, it was always all about bodybuilding and everything else had to be molded around it. And that's the way it grew because the better I got bodybuilding, the more it grew, the more my business grew. And eventually, it was to start PT at 18. And at the same time, I was working doors at a nightclub, working on the doors at a nightclub, you know, the usual bouncer stuff. Um, 
And for all that time, I was competing as well. So the more I competed, the better I did. I pretty much won all the junior titles that was possible in NABA, in, NABA in the junior, junior ranks. And at the age of 21, I was in a position where I was able to coach and PT full time. So I didn't have to do the door work anymore. And from that age, I was able to fully devote myself towards the craft of bodybuilding and everything it entailed with coaching and PT. Mm -hmm. So for me, who am I? I'm definitely a person that just lives and breathes bodybuilding because yeah. it's my passion. It's what I've always loved. And that is what has always been my driving force towards everything I do. Mm -hmm. And that has molded and transferred over towards everything I'm doing right now, which is business. And what you'll see in my life, everything is revolved around bodybuilding. All my business, all my interests, all my friends, everything kind of molds into one. Mm -hmm. And the main driving factor for that, I believe, is still bodybuilding. No, without a doubt. And did you know what? I want to go back to something for a second. A lot of people get to kind of later on in their life and they still haven't found uh, this thing that they're, they're, that, that's their purpose. They're kind of drifting, right? Yeah. And I remember at 22, I, I, to be fair, I got to 22 and I didn't know really where I was. And when I got to 23, there was this flash that said, I want to be in the fitness industry. I'm happy in a gym. I'm confident in a gym. I love talking to people about the gym. Now, you were back at 15, 16. Now, I always tell people that your life leaves clues to what your life's purpose is. At 15, can you remember what was it that gave you the vision that your life was going to be bodybuilding? The, when I started making progress in the gym, when I started seeing my body change, when I started actually making progress and seeing the fruit of my work come to fruit that, that is when I realized, like, this is what I want to do. This is who I want to be. And this is all I want. And do, do you know with that, what I find fascinating is, Progress is the route to confidence. Would you agree? Yeah. The only, the, only, the only ever time in my life when I'm not happy is when I'm not moving forward, I'm not making progress. These are the only times in my life where I feel empty and I don't feel happy. I, I love that because I, I joined the club with you on that because at school, I wasn't really progressing. In life outside of school, I wasn't really progressing. And then I started to lift weights and you know, the lifting of weights made me feel like there was something that I could progress at that I'd never, ever really seen a lot of progress in my life anymore. And the funny thing is that you've just described the stepping stone as to why most people start lifting. It's because it's something at their control that they can progress. Right? And once you start to progress, you go, I look different. I feel different. I can keep lifting more. I can keep training more. And I think in that, the one of the things that why you're 28 now 27? 27 yeah. 27. you're 27 and after 10 years of committing yourself to bodybuilding it's no wonder that you own a gym you own a very successful business because you've been you've been focused on progress for 10 years and i think i just want to kind of make a very very strong point of that is that there's a lot of people that are trying to make just getting frustrated at six to 12 months in to anything that they're doing and they are really disappointed that they haven't made any progress and it, even at 27 now you're 10 years in and it's it's all picking up pace right yeah in the last few years it's really rattled forward for you right yeah i, I think that that definitely came with just the work ethic just being better and my commitment being higher towards the cause so i think people get disheartened because of the, the, the loose true vision of the goal like i set out a goal when i was 16 to open a gym and I knew I was going to do that. I just knew it was just going to be a matter of when. And all my actions reflected to what I wanted. All my actions reflected to my goals. So by the age of 21, I was in a position where I could do that, where I was able to open a gym in 2017. Mm -hmm. So it, did, it wasn't something that happened overnight. I was working towards it for five, six years before I could take that first stepping stone towards my first goal. Yeah. So... People have said, like, how did you do it? I'm like, well, I wasn't your usual teenager. I didn't go on holidays. I didn't splash money. I didn't do anything apart from work, eat, train, and sleep. That was my life. I did not go on holiday, right, until I was 22 years old. Never. I never went on holiday until I was 22. And I only went, and that was, that, that was a holiday where I went to Rome for four days, 
and we only went because my client was competing. Wow. And, and just, you know, just on, on you saying that, I think there's this, um, I think there's a big fear because I know from competing when I did that I wasn't heading towards pro status, but it became everything. Yeah. But business, Kuba, is everything, right? Your coaching and your bodybuilding, I just want to bring up this topic of submerging yourself until a goal is accomplished. Because a lot of people listening to this are at that early stage of their life. They've not got very many role models around them. And they're trying to progress their coaching business. And, and, and they're probably putting 25 to 30% of themselves into it. So you've just said that at a very young age, you said, I want to get, get a gym. And at a very young age, I wanted to become an incredible bodybuilder. But you didn't relent. You didn't, you didn't take your foot off the gas. And you didn't, you didn't take 50% of your downtime you put 9900 into accomplishing that goal yeah it's it's like the bodybuilders like to say all or nothing mentality i think to achieve excellence at anything you have to have that mentality all or nothing mentality you have it because i can see it i think anyone who achieves a certain level of success does have it because even right now i am all in with my bodybuilding, I am all in with my coaching because for me, they both go hand in hand. Like, like I mentioned to you, like everything I do merge into one. The better bodybuilder I am, the better coach I am. The better athlete I am, the better coach I am. And I think both really truly do go hand in hand because mm -hmm. they both teach you discipline and commitment. And if you have those attributes that make you a great coach and a great bodybuilder, you will succeed in both mm. because that's what it truly takes. It, for me, it's never just been about focusing on one or the other. The more focus I put into my bodybuilding, the more focus I put into my business and vice versa. It kind of, they both push each other on. Mm -hmm. It was never a case of just prioritizing, prioritizing one or the other because Prioritizing one made the other side grow at the same time. Of course, yeah. That's incredible. Now, going on that topic, which I absolutely love, and, and the name of this podcast is called Mastery, and, and this really flows on really nicely from, from what we were just talking about. Um, I have a belief that progress is infinite um, and that uh, anyone that says that they've reached a goal um, or achieved success at something, to me, it's about... Uh, you talked about excellence, by the way, and ENCE to me means that it's infinite too. And if you are excellent at something, it's finished. It's not, I don't agree that. So mastery, um, I said to you off the before we started recording, what does mastery mean to Cuba? To me, it means progress across all fields. For me, it's not just about being good at one thing in your field. It's about truly, truly being able to give your all to everything you set out to do. Like everything you put your mind to from what I've seen, it's all at a top level. Like even right now, you're still training and you're still training at a very high level. Like everything you put your mind into, it's not just done with a half-hearted approach. For me, for me, Mastery is being able to progress at all times across every field that you have. And for me, it's never about the goal. Like reaching a goal means nothing to me. Mm -hmm. When I opened the gym, I kid you not, Mark, it was the biggest disappointment ever. I felt nothing. <laughs> I felt nothing. Oh, brilliant. When I got my pro card, I felt nothing. When I won UKBFF British Finals as a junior and a heavyweight on the same day, I felt nothing. But do you know what, what meant something? The journey there and the progress I made there, that's what, that's what truly meant something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like to me, even when people talk about goals, like I set out goals, yes, but they're just goalposts of my progression. The goals mean nothing. It's just another tick that you get to on the journey with your progress. Yeah. That is what mastery to me is. Oh, wow, man. That, that, that's, that's incredibly powerful because, do you know what's funny? It blew my mind once seeing Jordan and Corrin compete down in Hayes. You know, the little yeah. show there? Yeah. And, 
uh, at the one. And they almost dragged, dr dragged the trophies with them, just put them in the boot. And at that time, I looked and I went, you know, wow. You know, I, I was deeply inspired by how good they were. And I just went, that meant nothing. Oh, it meant something, but it's part of the journey. And I never forget that. It, it just it just went in the boot. And then late years down the line, you know, I remember writing my book. And when it arrived, I went, amazing. And then I went, right, how many can I sell? How many people can I reach with it? And the funny thing was, receiving a copy of my book was probably one of the biggest anticlimaxes of my life. Yeah. I'm a guy that couldn't write when I left school. And it was like, I, I did this realization, just like you, you build a gym, done, right, how, how can, we, can it be the best in the country? Right, done, what's the next goal? And I think this is a really important lesson for people is, is that, uh, you know, if you're not enjoying the journey, every little destination that you reach to, um, that you think will bring you fulfillment, it's wrong. Tom Bilial, who was the owner of Quest Nutrition, and he does, I can't remember the name of his podcast, Impact Theory. Um, and he did a, a talk on, uh, on, on YouTube once, and they said, how was it becoming a multi, multi, multi-millionaire? And he said, I woke up in the morning, and all I could see my bank balance going up and up and up and up and up. And they said, how did it feel? He went, no different. It's just, to him, it was just a monetary figure, and somebody bought the company, and he was like, next. And I think this is really common with entrepreneurial people or people that are, I say the word entrepreneurial because I don't think entrepreneur is in business because entrepreneurial mastery, progress, excellence, it's all attributed to people that have the desire to not stop and the desire to keep progressing in whatever they do. And I think that, that is, that's incredible. And, and, and going hand in hand with mastery, I talk to a lot of coaches who haven't reached what I perceive to be what coaching is. I think there's a lot of, trainers who are destined to be coaches but they see themselves as coaches so my second question to you if i may is what's coaching to kuba let me let me put it this way to you right a lot of people that i work with start on a certain level 12 to 16 months down the line they are a different person yeah so for me coaching isn't isn't just leading someone it's taking someone from a place where they could never imagine to be in 12 to 16 months time and seeing them progress with a vision that i have set out for them and a vision that i have in my mind as well like for me it goes beyond that it goes from not just transforming the, the, the physique it goes from transforming the person in general because I know of what I can do with an individual, they're not just going to change the physique. It's going to grow them as a person on another level. It's going to give them confidence to do things that they have never done before. And I've, done, I've been able to do that with people for, for many, many years. And that's what's been the driving force for me to continue doing so. Because I could, I, you know, I could have pursued other things. Yeah. Like with coaching, it's never been the financial stuff for me. Because when I started, there was no money in it. Yeah. I did it because I loved it. And as I do it now, if I didn't love it, I wouldn't do it. Simple yeah. as that, because I wouldn't do anything that doesn't give me, you know, happiness. It doesn't give me that, that kick in life. So for me, it's not just what many people perceive. It's, it's more of a life changing experience for an individual that I work with and I connect with. And would you see this being to, to support a coach that I would, still say maybe is just training their clients are you doing workouts right because we're talking to two ends of the spectrum here there's going to be people listening to your entrepreneurial journey your progress as a pro bodybuilder and wanting to really understand which i will get to that this this pinnacle level of being a pro bodybuilder having a having a big business and having lots of clients which is where a lot of people aspire to be but one of the biggest things is there's aspiring to be like you have a business like you have the income like you the wealth like you but there's the stuff that needs to happen before you'll get there. It's like Jordan would always say when I interviewed him on here, and he said, he said, all I set out to be was the biggest guy in the country, the strongest. And as a result of that, I built a brand off the back of it, but I didn't set out to be wealthy. And a lot of younger coaches are setting out to be wealthy before they become a coach, right? So from your perspective, what would you say to a, to a trainer who is 
training their clients every single day, hasn't really looked at this thing that you've talked about, life-changing in terms of thinking about setting somebody up for a longer-term goal. What, what would be your advice to, say, a younger coach who's trying to make that switch to becoming a coach? Don't focus on making money. The more you focus on chasing money and chasing wealth and the paper, the worse you will be. Like all I ever focused on is what can I do to be better? What can I do to grow? What can I do just to simply be able to do this and not have to worry about needing to do something else? Yeah. I've never even thought twice about earning money above and beyond what I needed to just be able to bodybuild and do what I want to do in terms of coaching and training ever. All I ever focused on is what can I do to be better? What can I do to be a better coach, better bodybuilder? And like I said, both always, always went hand in hand. So for me, I know for a fact, if I started chasing the financial side, I would have never grown into the person and the coach that I am today. Mm -hmm. I think I would have gone down the route of just getting greedy and then not being able to provide the service that I can. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, uh... I speak to your clients and you're very, very kind uh, to support me with the, the business coaching and the support that I give to a lot of coaches. And I'm very fortunate to listen to the feedback that they give about you. And uh, one thing that I hear over and over again is how much you care. Yeah. And I think that that's something that's a real valuable lesson to the fitness industry at the moment, because there's a lot of talk about, you know, how big can you get, how much money you can make. And don't get me wrong we all want a comfortable life. We all want to grow money actually supports us and, and is a, is a, is a value met metric of our progress, but not necessarily that the impact that you make on your clients gets people to speak about you. And in fact, I was going to put a post out tomorrow, which briefly says, you know, if your clients aren't talking about you in a positive way, you're not doing a good enough job, but your clients all tell me that you care. Um, what's at the forefront of your brain when you're doing the, the monstrosity number of support and check-ins that you do with your clients in terms of them as a person? Mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, because it never feels an effort because to me, I look forward to my days. So no matter how hard the day is, it's not, it comes natural. I don't even think about it because what I give them is what I'd expect to, to, to have in return. So to me, there is no real thought process. I wake up, I start the day, and I mean to go on. So I always aim to kind of give them what I'd want to see from someone in a way, and that kind of little care. Plus, for me, like I said, what I want to see from the process when I'm working with someone, if I didn't care, I wouldn't be able to achieve it because they just wouldn't get the attention that they need. I get that. And it, you know, on that then, if you if it's an automatic thing for you, caring is it should it's just an internal value that's important to you. What are the standards that you hold for yourself as a person that clearly rubs off on your clients? Because um, you know the discipline in bodybuilding. You know, uh, what are the things that run through your head that are obviously now automatic that I'm going to challenge you now and bring to your forefront? What are the standards that you expect of yourself? I mean, I just watch it daily, just the way you, you train and the discipline that you have. What are, what are the ingrained standards that Kuba has that you would, if you just share yours and it will give us an insight into what you expect of you every day? What you always say, lead by example. You know what, you saying that, leading by example is something that I know a lot of coaches leave out. And how, how do you, how do you, what it, what it, what is goes through your head in terms of leading by example? What what is the standards that you expect of yourself when it comes to leading by example? How can I expect someone to be so committed to the craft if I can't do it? Yeah. How can I expect someone to adhere to the diet, adhere to the bedtime schedule, adhere to the working hours if I can't do it? How can I tell someone? to sort the daily routine out if mine's been a mess? How can I tell someone to talk the game with the check-ins if I'm late with their check-in? 
I would be in no position to do that. So this is kind of where I hold myself at a place where I have to lead by example and I have to show the team how it needs to be done. So for me, you know, it's not even a, a question of leader by example. It's just what I do. It's just what I have to do. But more importantly, it's what I like to do. I like to show people what can be done and I like to show people, you know, look how good you are going to feel when you are so disciplined, how good you're going to feel when you are ticking all the boxes, when you are fully recovered because you're not missing your meals, you're not missing your sleep, you're not missing your schedule, how much work you can get done because you're so organized and how much, you know, how productive you can be when you value your own time so much and not waste time, most importantly. 100%. That, that's incredible for coaches and with that how important is it therefore in your opinion to have an inspiring physical goal for your own body your shape and, and we are going to cross the barrier here to whether somebody is an endurance athlete, athlete trying to play sport at the highest level whether you're competing at the highest level i see such a common trait with the people that attract clients online it's very, very clear that they are not only leading by example, but they're constantly working, striving to, towards something on their own for themselves. Like I've strived towards my body, my business, my brain. I've strived towards my relationship and, 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 and business kind of mastery as well as my body and my knowledge. I watch you and you, know, you strive towards your body, your business, your life, your relationship, everything that you've got. And I actually do watch a lot of coaches and you say, there's, there's not a lot about you. And I don't mean that in a patronizing way to anybody, but what are you working on? So to you, how important is having your own internal projects on you, your body, your business? How, inter how important have they been to you and how important can they be to other people? For me, that, that is a priority because without that, like that is the foundation of everything I do. My own progress and my own bodybuilding that is the foundation that leads to everything else. Because like I said to you before, early on, early in the podcast, the better I am as a bodybuilder, the more progress I am, the more progress I make, yeah. the better everything else is, yeah, as it always has been. It's a natural progression for me. Yeah. Since a young age, since I first started, the better I got at bodybuilding, the better I got business. Mm -hmm. The more I grew, as a bodybuilder, the more the business grew. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's the foundation of everything. If I'm not making progress, nothing else is. Because for me, making my own progress, that is what drives everything else. That is what truly gives me the fulfillment and gives me the part that I need to be able to be good at everything else as well. Because without that, the whole foundation falls. Because without that foundation, I won't be happy. Without that foundation, I wouldn't look forward to my days as much. Mm -hmm. So that's the driving force of everything around me and everything that I do. Wow. Do you know, when it comes to your business and everything that you've got, the gym, the life, you know, your partner, Meg, the commitment you have, your, your eating and your training, um, a lot, of, a lot of people will, will say, you know, I, I just don't have time. And they've got clients, they've got clients, and they've got, uh, they've got an apartment, they live on their own, uh, and that's about it, right? And one thing I, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to delving into with you is there's a lot going on, yeah. right? And I watched at the weekend, and I commented on this because it was incredibly inspiring to see. Am I right in saying that you peaked 21 clients at the weekend? Yeah. Right. That I need to mention because I, I remember competing on a day and doing two and I nearly had a nervous breakdown, right? Um, and <laughs> it sounds pretty pathetic to, 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 to 21 because I was, you know, to you doing 21. How does Kuba not only manage his time, but how have you learned the skills and what are those skills to manage how busy your life is? Can you also give us an idea of what, your kind of life looks like in terms of your schedule? So firstly, I definitely have to say a massive thank you to Meg as 
without her, I don't think I'd be able to do anything I do. She does make my life a lot easier. She does help me a lot with organizing my days and just general day-to-day -day stuff like, you know, helping out, helping me out with food, etc. She does do a lot for me. So I wouldn't be able to do all I do without her support. I want to highlight that first and foremost. Amazing. And how does my day look? So I'll give you an example, right? On the peak week, the day started at quarter past four every single morning. I'd get up. First thing I'd do is I'd check my phone, see if there's any outstanding messages from last night. So that probably take me around 15 minutes checking that. Downstairs, weigh myself, do my own checking, um, get hydrated, and then, you know, get some of the bits ready for the morning um, that I actually get ready. And then I would then straight, go straight do my cardio. Whilst I'm doing cardio, again, I would be waiting on my clients to actually get up and message me with the updates. And then finish my cardio, get straight onto the updates. Meg would be cracking on getting some actual food prepared and getting the day started and ready so from quarter past four in the morning the day is pretty pretty intense with getting everything done and getting everything ready so on days like that the reason why i could beat 21 clients is because one i woke up early two i was organized enough to do so and three i was literally waiting on them every single day to update me so it was so much easier because one they wouldn't be stressed because I would literally reply to them within seconds because I'd be on my phone. Two, I wouldn't be because I would literally be able to work one by one because each one, they were all getting up at different times anyway. So by the time I finished one client, the second one would wake, so on, so on. So for me, keeping a tight schedule, keeping a perfect daily structure and routine, that's absolute key. And I think that's something that has improved ever since I got with Meg. She is, um, she's got an Olympic background with Olympic diving. She has always been rigid and so, so, so regimented since a very young age. And obviously I had a boxing background, et cetera, but I was never that regimented as she was. And she has definitely, definitely put me in the right path with that. Yeah. So, you know, I'm lucky enough to have a partner that doesn't mind going to bed at half past eight every night, eight o'clock every night, year round. Yeah. Because that is literally what we do. We go to bed no later than 9 p.m. every single day. And our days start at half past four or 5 a.m. every single day, year round. Yeah. Amazing. Without that, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. If I had a, you know, if I had a couple of days where I'd just wake up at 9 a.m., I would miss half of my day. It would be impossible to get, to get everything done and be able to train and do all I do within the given day if I miss that hour, if I miss that slot. So for me, it literally has to be like a militant operation every single day. But again, I wouldn't be able to do that without a partner that has the same mindset and the same, the same goals as me and the same drive as I have. Yeah. So I'm very lucky to be able to share that with Meg and be able to do that as a team. Because without her, it would be a lot harder. I'd probably have to employ someone full time to be able to help me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, do, do you know what? And and with that, then, right? Distractions. Yeah. Distractions are all around us. Yeah. How do, how do you avoid them? My goals are far bigger than you know. Oh. Mate, when you've got a vision for something, when you've got a passion for something, I don't care what it is. It, it's not happening. It's not getting in the way. Like my goal is to step on stage, Olympia stage by the time I'm 30. I've got three years to do that. Uh -huh, yeah. My goal is to continue building a brand. My goal is to build more gyms. My goal is to, you know, tick off all these boxes, which when I get there, they'll mean nothing. But it's the journey that counts right now. Yeah. And desire towards building that is far bigger than anything else. Same with Meg. I she's got a goal set out. She's gonna she's gonna beat Olympia before me. And trust me, like the distractions, anything else apart from our goals literally means fucking nothing. I know, I know, I can hear we, that. We are, we are getting married 11th of December, right? And I can guarantee you now, 11th of December when we get married, we will probably be in bed at 9 a.m. and we'll be waking up the day after at, at, at 5 a.m. to start our day. And the outside world looking in will be like, that's odd, right? And the outside world looks at bodybuilding and says it's odd. The outside world looks at um, people with inspiring goals and say, what's wrong with these people? 
it's because there's a small percentage of people that operate like this. If this is what it takes for us to achieve our goals, we don't care. We will do it. Mm -hmm. Like, whatever it takes, we will do. Whatever we have to do, we will do. Yeah. And therefore, with people that are, are kind of struggling with this vision, you obviously talk about the gym and you talk about going to the Olympia, you talk about coaching and building the brand. Do you, do you work in your head about your vision? Does your vision come to you? Has your vision evolved over times? Um, what would be your advice to people that kind of struggle a bit with their vision? If my vision was the same as it is now when I first started, I'd think I'm insane. I'd think I'm an idiot. You have to start small and it will build over time. Yeah. So like I mentioned to you, each of us at the time I achieved the goals that I set out, they just got bigger. It's the same with vision. Each of us at time I get to a certain level. It's almost like you, you, you walk through a door and you can see another door in front of you. And then you walk through that corridor and you keep going and going. And that's how it kind of builds on from there. So you have to start small. If you start big and you can't even see that end vision, you can't see, if you can't see that end goal in front of you, you're setting yourself up for a miserable ride because yeah, yeah. at the same time, yes, you've got to set goals, but there have to be goals that are within your view. If they are too far away, I feel like a lot of people get demotivated. Yeah. But it's unrealistic, right? It, it's, yeah. it, it's just, it's like, you know, it's unrealistic just... until it becomes realistic. Yeah, of course. Of course. So it's only realistic because you're at a level where, you know, you can't just see that door yet. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you're not going to be at a level where that door will be opened. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, it's, it's essentially having this vision, which, which, like, listen, if you start in bodybuilding now and you want to reach this level, have that level there, but don't be underestimated by how important it is to look at what the small steps are that equal that further down the line, right? Because at 15, Absolutely. 16, you started bodybuilding and you weren't a pro. Um, Absolutely. At 16, all I wanted to do, I just wanted to get in shape and, and, and do a show. I just wanted to be, you know, NABA Junior Northeast champion, under 18s. That's all I wanted. Yeah. That was the first stepping stone. Snowball. Once I got that, once I got that, I wanted junior, junior, what was it? NABA Junior British Finals at yeah. 21. That was the next goal. I take that off. Yeah. Goal after that, Nava Junior Universe. Yeah. Year after that, take that off. After Junior Universe, it was UKBFF Junior British Finals. Take that off. Heavyweights, take that off. Pro card, take that off. It was a yeah. stepping stone year by year, year by year. Yeah, yeah. And you focus on one at a time. Yeah. One, two, three, four. And now the Arnold's very soon. Yeah. Pretty yeah. important. Now, to all... In fact, no, it's three weeks tomorrow, actually. Three weeks tomorrow i shall be there um but here's it it is something for you um your online coaching businesses continue to grow all right um a lot of coaches aspire to work with a lot of people what are your big lessons from growing your online coaching business um some stumbling blocks that you've run into with working with an ever-growing number of people learn to say no really yeah, learn to say no because I've realized that I want to work with certain individuals and if that means me saying no, so be it. Like right now, I'm probably saying no more than I say yes. Mm -hmm. A lot more than I say yes, actually. So for me, learning to say no and having the confidence to do so, knowing that business is going to be there has been key. Yeah. Because we all get to a point where we're just growing and we kind of try and bite off more than we can chew. I've been there before, and he, he just made me miserable. Yeah. So for me, I want to work with a certain level of clientele. I want to work with certain individuals because that is what truly makes me happy, and that is what makes me perform better as a coach when I work with certain individuals. So for me, it makes no sense to take on someone that isn't going to make me perform the way I know I can. I need to work with people that are going to bring out the best in me and vice versa. I'm going to bring out the best in them because it's going to drive me to really, really work through working with them. And, and, and what do you think has been, I mean, I'm sure when people reach out to you, 
especially with how you present your social media, which has changed over the last year or two. Like it's, it's, it's very different in, in, in an incredible way. You're very consistent with it. Um, have you noticed that the way that you consciously present what you do has changed the way that the inquiries are coming through in terms of who are coming to you? How's that evolved? Yeah, absolutely. The, the more passionate, I think that a lot of the things I do are based off the back of your teachings and, and what you do. Um, like I said, I followed, your, I followed your content very closely for a long time. So a lot of the things that I have implemented and have been implementing for years and years has been a back of what you actually teach. So, you know, directly and indirectly, you've had a massive impact on what I do and how I do it. Thank you. Um, and just the level of clientele that, that is coming through is just totally different. It's the people that I want to work with through me expressing myself the way I want to and showing my own personality and, and how I work and, and what I'm about that's definitely bringing the people that I gel with the most. Yeah. And have you found in the past, because, you know, the one thing that I, I say to people and I reference you and I talk to people as like, especially physique athletes that know you, I say, okay, compare Kuba to someone else. What does Kuba's brand stand for? And they'll say professionalism. They'll say hard work and head down. And one thing that I've noticed with your content is, is that there's a lot more thought into its professionalism yeah. and, and how you present yourself, but you've also presented a lot more of you and your thoughts and your beliefs, how a lot of people struggle to let their true self uh, present on social media. Has that ever been something that you've challenged with and how have you kind of developed that ability to just, because I, I see just you. And a lot of people struggle to be just them. I think it's a conversation I had with yourself quite a while ago. That's pushing me towards just expressing myself more and expressing myself for who I am because that's resulted in, in my personality coming through a lot more and then me actually getting the custom that I want and kind of, if someone goes over social media and they click from a content, they read my posts, they will know if they can work with me or not. Yeah, 100%. In my opinion, they will know if they're going to click with me and they will know if they're going to make the right fit. I think that's very, very important for anybody listening to this, that if people go through your content on social media and you can almost do an audit and say, do I think people are getting an insight into how I train, how I live, what I think like? I mean, we see a day in the life you're taking the dogs for a walk, right? You know, we see you with Meg. We, we see the fact that you two are together all the time. We see the fact that you train very hard. We see the fact that you two are very intense with everything that you do together, but it equals a goal that's to do with progress and success leaves clues, Cooper. And if you're not giving anybody any clues on your social media platform as to what being in your world as a professional brand would involve, yeah. then, then how is anyone going to get to know you? You know, but the interesting thing you said to me is that the, the team, I mean, that photo that you put out the other day of the team, you know, there is a, there is a big thing that people underestimate that the, the, the clients that you have are not individuals. They are a team. Yeah. How, how, do you, how do you make people feel part of that team? Because it's very clear that they're very proud, very, very proud to be a part of team uh, MK or I think uh, you, you put everybody under the banner of MK now, don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. MK Elite. How, how do you, how do you how do you do that? Do you do you do that consciously by you know you share a lot of your athletes, you talk oh, a lot about your athletes? Is there a conscious thought process behind that? I don't just share on my athletes. I have a lot of involvement with them. So yeah, yeah. every Saturday morning at nine a.m., unless it's a show day, unless it's a show weekend, I host calls with them. So we've we've got a client group where we all engage every Saturday. I host a call an educational call on two topics and a Q&A for all my clients every single Saturday at 9 a.m. every single morning. Meg does the same for her group of girls. So we do that not only to build a rapport with them, but to try and bring a little bit more value into what we do yes. and how we do it and just try and give them a little bit more knowledge and thought process on what we do and how. Yeah. But they also they definitely feel as part of a team through being through being welcomed towards everything that we do and sharing so much with them. I, we do share a lot of content with them. 
we share a lot of conversations with them. Like the, 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 the groups that we do have with them are very active with a lot of, with a lot of people actually helping each other. Yeah. So, you know, the groups that we have our clients in, sometimes like the, when someone asks a question, it's already answered before I even yeah, get yeah, to it. Of course, of course, yeah. So everyone always feels welcomed and like everyone supports one another as well. Do you know you're saying that? This is an involvement in the coaching world. It's something that I teach a lot of. You don't have clients, you have a community. Yeah. And I think that when you look at Ultraflex, when I look at M10 and I look at that, that's a community. Yeah. Fitness, whilst we're on our own training, um, we're not around fitness people. And uh, I remember used to go to bodybuilding shows and people are like, what do you want to go and watch people on stage for? I used to love just walking around, chatting to people who love to train. I used to go to body power That's and, and I just, just talk to people that love training. And, and I was taught, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just That's the best bit. I love that. Ah, just chatting. And do you know what? I spoke to somebody on, on a call that I worked with this morning and, and uh, I said, uh, you know, there's no expectation in your life to hang around with people that aren't doing or inspired by the things that you do, but very rarely, you know, you can't go to a bar, a restaurant, or whatever, and see your type of people. Yeah. And, you know, that's the same in all fields, right? But when it comes to training, um, one of the things I think we owe our clients that are all together is the community, yeah. the bringing together of people to just talk, network, learn, grow. And one of the most amazing things is, yeah, can I ask you this, actually? Have you noticed uh, a higher degree of retention when you bring the community together? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. People feel like they're part of something. Yeah. Because they feel like they're part of something, they feel like they're emotionally involved as well. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Like, with me, I, I don't really get <laughs> drop-offs. Like, you know, if it happens, it happens for valid reasons or simply someone is at a different journey in their life and they're moving on. Yeah. Which is also fine. Yeah, of course it is. Everybody just goes through, you know, different journeys and absolutely right at certain points, wrong at other points. But the funny thing is about bodybuilding and physique development and training is, you know, one show isn't you've done. Yeah. And there's a lot of clients, a lot of coaches, and I'm going to ask your, ask your opinion on this. This is going to help a lot of coaches who do body transformations and prep coaching. A client gets to the end of a body transformation. They get to their first show and they go, thanks ever so much. They're done. What have you, what have you done wrong as a coach? I think you failed them because if they're telling you they're done at the end of that, they feel like that's the end of the journey, not the beginning. Right. They should feel like that is just the start. What, the, what, what realistically what they should be saying is, what's next? What do we do now? Yeah. How, do we, how do we go above that level? I love that. What do we do to progress? Yeah. What's the next steps? Like, generally, apart from one person that competed this weekend, every single, one, every single person has literally said, what's next? Yeah. What do we do now? And, and how do you instill that? Is, is this something that uh, is this something that you actively talk about with them throughout their prep, throughout their journey? Um, about listen, once we've got to here, you know, this is this is kind of like the next steps. What's the? Is there a conscious thought process, or is it the fact that? Um, I mean, I, I always used to like this when I used to coach people. They come to the end of say a body transformation, and I know they're not going anywhere. Yeah, I know they're not going anywhere. Because they're talking futuristically, right? When we finish this one, what's the what's the next steps? And I'm sure you get that. Yeah. So, so what 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 how how do you think that happens? Because good coaches like you don't necessarily look into why that happens. But can I ask you and challenge? You, why do you think that happens? And how how does a coach get better at doing that? It's simple. The progress that they've made to get to that show, they're hungry for more. Right. Amazing. They want to. They want. They want to keep going. Yeah. So there was literally all like. What's next? Next show, off season. Let's go. Yeah. And and I think uh, th this goes hand in hand with anything in life, right? If you and I think this happens to a lot of coaches, um, the progress that somebody perceives that they're going to make under your guidance actually isn't matching what the person wanted. 
Do you know what I mean? Like whether or not it's me business coaching somebody and that person gets to a certain stage, you went, I did okay. The, the goal, as you've said right at the beginning of this episode, this the, the, today, you said it's exceeding expectations. It's taking them on a life-changing journey that shows them that what they thought was possible is 10 times more. And I think once you've created a life, a life change and a life mindset change in somebody that they never thought, they're like, okay, I'm invested to find out what's next. I can tell you that with confidence now. Every single person that I put on stage this weekend, just gone. I would never have expected to look the way they did. Yeah. This is why as soon as they all came off stage, they was like, what do I do now? Let's go. Mm-hmm. What's next? What's the plans? I love that. And I think that's because uh, Nathan came on uh, my branded Pat Mastery call on Monday night. And that guy is just hungry now. You know, he's just hungry for what's next. And I don't know whether you saw my post. You said, should we do the masters together? I was like, hey, hold on a minute. <laughs> I reckon I can, I'll sneak under a 39 category just to bring myself back in a bit. But but I listen, I listened to him. And obviously he was prepped by you. And I, I hear this next step, next journey, next, next phase. And I think that's something that's really good feedback for a coach is that as you're going through the client journey, um, are they making the level of progress that not that they expect that you know they can do? And that means going above and beyond, doesn't it? That, that doesn't mean just training people. That means going above and beyond. So let me ask you this if I can. How do you go above and beyond the standard check-in? Like you do your calls on a Saturday. Um, you know, let's say people have a check-in. Like, how, how do you, what, what's your going above and beyond strategy? It goes far beyond just check-ins. I, you rate the person's personality down. I'll give you Nathan, for example, proud example, like Nathan. When I started working with Nathan, he didn't really have much confidence in himself. I don't think he had much confidence in, in his own ability as a bodybuilder yeah. or as a PT. Yeah. He did well, but not really what he's doing now. Yeah, yeah. And I think he, he, he won. Through, through nurturing him and through pushing him towards seeing what he can achieve with his own physique that has pushed him to progress across all avenues in life because i feel like i gave him belief that he is able to do whatever he wants to do and he's done that and i've done that with so many people now so would you would you be right in saying christ i do hope people have got to this part of the podcast because we're going off on one now uh, and I love it. But do, do you feel, therefore, it's a coach's obligation, not obligation, because you either got it or you haven't, but you can cultivate this. You're not looking at their training and their diet and trying to build a body. You know that at the root of, of incredible change is the person. And you're looking out for where their, where their own limitations in themselves lie. Yeah. You know, that, that's where mentality. you're invested in the person, aren't you? It's always the mentality. If you don't invest in the person, you're not going to get the best out of them. In order to get the best out of someone, you have to get in the head. You have to give them the tools in their own mind for them to believe that they can, they can achieve what they set out to achieve. If you don't, they will not do it. Yeah. Wow. I, th- 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 this has been absolutely incredible. You know, um, if, if I could ask you, in the, ne- in the last six months to a year, What's the most powerful podcast or book episode or book that you've read or done that's had the biggest impact in the last six to 12 months of your coaching or life? I think Ray Dalio principles. Really? Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Powerful. It's it's definitely solidified a lot of principles that I live by and how I want to conduct myself and who I want to be. It's a powerful book. It's a big old book. Audio book. Oh, did you do audio? Yeah, I know. If you get the book, you literally, if you're anything, if you're anything like me, if you look at it and you go, oh, uh, yeah, it's a right. thick one. It's, it's a thick one. But the audio book's a good, um, a good listen, right? Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's a very good person to listen to as well. He's like yourself. Like when he speaks, you'll listen. Yeah, yeah no, I like that. I like that. There's plenty of audio books that I've tapped into and gone, wow. Um, uh, Tim Grover 
with his book winning the new one and, and relentless that he wrote about he was uh, Kobe Bryant's coach you heard about him yeah uh, I remember sitting on a tube uh, reading relentless and I genuinely wanted to hit the door because I was like yeah. yes you know when you just relate to something yeah. and it just it's it's about relentless in everything that you do and then winning is all about what it takes to win and they're, they're not huge books but you just talked about you know principles and it's when it's something hits your core and reminds you of what you stand for yeah. and I think a lot of people don't actually know what they stand for and I think it would be very powerful for people to actually take a stop and go through that that principles book and you know I one of my books that instilled a lot of my principles were um, was uh, Jack Canfield's success principles because it was a very easy to follow book and it's it's called success principles it's a thick one but it breaks down um really important principles to live by and it's very similar i'd say to um ray dalio's book um but it's, it's an incredible book now my last question to you is um what would be one action step that people could take listening to this to further or begin their steps to mastery of their coaching craft? Ooh. Find your passion. I think without passion, I wouldn't be where I am. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to do what I do. Whatever it is in life that you set out to do, it needs to be worked off your passion because I feel like if it isn't and you don't have passion for something, you will never, ever feel what I feel on a daily basis. And I would never want to live this way. If you're passionate about something, you will reach a level of mastery without a doubt. Yeah. Because you, uh, by this, but, yeah, because you just want to get better at that thing that you're passionate yeah. about. And genuinely, yeah. I, I think... You want, progress, you want to get better. You just want to make progress. Yeah. Like, as soon as you find that passion for something it will happen and it will get better. It will grow because you, you love it so much. You just completely and utterly devote yourself to it. And with that, you just cannot, cannot fail. Kuba, um, you and I have never had such an intense conversation together. And this is my uh, opportunity to get an understanding of how your mind ticks. And do you know what? Um, a lot of people externally and me included about myself and people have always referred to me as a bit of a meathead and a bit of this and a bit of that. And naturally when bodybuilding, there's a lot of stereotyping going on. Yeah. I just hope that you guys listening to this episode have witnessed an incredibly passionate uh, person who has dedicated 10 years and hasn't even started properly yet to getting where he wants to get to and has given you an insight into what it takes. And I said this on a post this morning, there's nothing stopping everybody, anyone doing what they want to do. But as you said, it starts with passion, right? Yeah, I think many people forget I came from a very poor background. I started with nothing, Mark. I came with a background that wasn't educated whatsoever but what my background does have is a lot of work ethic when i first came to england i was 11 years old i couldn't speak a word of english my dad worked 12 to 14 hour shifts in a steel factory welding working for five pound an hour that was back in 2000 and 2005 i believe or six yeah something like that and what I always knew that I had is the same kind of work ethic and knowing that, you know, I can really put the work in against all odds, like my father did, like my mum did. So irrelevant of your position, irrelevant of where you are, if you want something bad enough, you will get it because everything that I set out to do, everything that I wanted, I've achieved and I came from absolutely nothing. I came from a very, very poor background. So if you want it, you'll make it happen. You'll, you will work for it. Cooper, I want to thank you for, for closing on that because what that will do to so many people 
and uh, people, a lot of coaches listening to this, hope and belief if you're not where you want to be and inspiration uh, beyond belief today to people that are climbing that think they've reached one bit and realize that um, there is a lot more. And I just wanted to say uh, thank you for giving up your time today. Honestly, I uh, kind of just for everybody listening to the podcast, how do we, how do we, how do we find out about you? Um, where's the best place to go to get into Cooper's world? Instagram and YouTube. I think I, I do put a lot of content on YouTube these days. So it's, uh, it's both Instagram and YouTube, to be honest. If you want the longer videos, uh, more day in the life stuff and what I do and how I do things, uh, definitely YouTube, because that will give you a much better picture with longer videos. But um, generally, you know, content on Instagram as well, uh, which is going to be a lot of my own training, um, a lot of my clients, a lot of my clients' results and what I get up to on a daily basis as well. Uh, but generally, it'll always be YouTube and Instagram mainly. And what are people typing in to find you on Instagram or YouTube? K-U-B-A. Type it in. Not C. Kuba. Spelt with a K. Um, K-U-B-A. And it, it, it will come up with me. There's not many Kubas around. So. <laughs> love it. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. Well, listen, I want to thank you. Um, and uh, guys, please do me a favor. Um, if you follow Kuba, if you follow me, I know that the fitness industry will not have listened to an episode like this for a long time. And if you want to help your colleagues and friends, please share the episode. Um, get it on your stories, share it wherever you can, wide and far, um, because, you know, Cooper's brought a hell of a lot to this industry and he's only just started. And I just also, on behalf of everybody listening to the podcast and me, wish you all the best for the Arnolds. I can't wait to get there. My wife can't wait to be with me. Uh, I, I, I watch you up there. So um, wishing you every success, man. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Mark. And uh, really, thank you for having me on. It's, uh, it's definitely a massive honour.